Okay. So good afternoon again. It's a wild weekend. We have Olympics we can watch. We have Super Bowl we can watch. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, so it's quite something. And if you look at the back of your bulletin, it's also Racial Justice Sunday and Science and Technology Sunday. So, I mean, we are packed full here today. I do want to call your attention to um, one of the paragraphs on the back of the bulletin, which says, but dismantling white supremacy is not solely about what we must tear down. We must ask ourselves, what must we build in its place? Over the next biennium, the national setting invites you to imagine with us, what does a world free of racism look like to you? And how might we work to bring such a vision into reality across every area of church and society? A big task for us to be thinking about. Uh, flowers, in honor of, they're from Sheila. Yes, in honor of Saint They're lovely, thank you so much. I did say that we are going, our mask policy will be slightly different. We will mask if we are not vaccinated, and we will definitely mask while singing. Other than that, at this point, we will not require masks. Um, our weekly calendar this week, uh, the pastor has office hours Tuesday from 10 to 12, correct? Oh, that's right. That is this week. <laughs> Yes, and we also have a council meeting on yes. Tuesday, so, um, and that'll likely be hybrid, so I think some of us will be here. Um, midweek meditation is Wednesday at 12, Bible study is Wednesday at 7, and social media committee is Thursday at 7, and that's a Zoom meeting. Are there any other weekly, anything else in the week that we need to be paying attention to? Okay. Um, in terms of food shelf needs, I have no new requests, but the same things apply. Um, always they need um, food supplies and um, all kinds of clothing and things like that for the, the Hilton community. Any other announcements? Okay, remember if you need pastoral support to contact Pastor Bradley directly. Um, it is our hope that this service of worship and the weekly meditation provide you with some comfort and stability in this time of great uncertainty. Parma Greece, United Church of Christ, sharing God's love wherever we are. And now let us prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits for worship. No matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are welcome with us here at Parma Greece UCC. And you know, we really do mean that. It's something we say uh, every week, or I say it any week, every week anyway. It's in the bulletin, we put it in there. It's true. We, and especially myself, you know, as, as the pastor of this church, I take it upon myself to represent Christ's love to everyone. To all of you, I, I really do love you. And everybody tuning in on uh, Facebook and on YouTube, it's hard to feel it when you're seeing it through a screen, but I hope you do. I love you very much. I hope you're well. You're welcome here. 
Join me now in our call to worship. From the comfort of our lives. In a society divided by power struggles and prejudice. With the honesty of our doubts and insecurities. Amen. Let us worship together. Our opening hymn is number 313, Like a Tree Beside the Waters. We come now to the blessing of our gifts. Every Sunday we take a moment to acknowledge everyone who has continued to contribute and be faithful to all of your different pledges and commitments. Uh, We recognize your gifts of monies and of time and talent and energy and effort and expertise. Thank you so much for continuing to be faithful uh, despite everything else that's going on in your lives. Let's take a moment now and bless all of those gifts. Benevolent God, You recognize the humanity of those who are hungry, poor, and suffering, and you promise to reorder the world on their behalf. Help us be part of that transformation. Take these gifts we bring into our church and help us to use them as you would to build a world that embraces everyone with your sustaining love. Receive our gifts, O God, and bless them, we pray. May they speed the coming of your kingdom and our community. Amen. God of life and of truth, your Son invites us to see the world through your eyes. And as we try, we find ourselves disoriented. You bless the poor, you bless the meek, you bless the pure in heart. You turn our world and its values upside down. This is strange territory for us. It doesn't look anything like what we have been taught to yearn for to work for, to 
believe will bring us happiness. Set us at Jesus' feet, we pray. Awaken in us the hunger and thirst for you that will lead us deeper into your love. Then make us into a fellowship of blessedness that beckons this community into your joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Renew us in your love, O God, and heal us with the comfort of your abundant love. Awaken us to the role we can play in healing your creation. Strengthen us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to hear your word and move forward in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Good morning. In the Old Testament, we have uh, the book of Psalms, the very first one. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers. But the light is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. And all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind drives away. But the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The New Testament readings, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 20. Uh, this verse is the most amazing keystone or capstone that Paul could, has, has written. He being such a logician uh, and theologian, uh, this is uh, just, just amazing. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised, and if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified that God raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. For if this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all of we are we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For the word of God in scripture. For the word of God among us. And I'm reading now from the gospel. I'm reading from the gospel according to Luke chapter 6 and verses 17 through 26. He, that is Jesus, came down with them, that is the apostles, and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you, who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice! On that day, 
and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and you will weep. Woe to you when people speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. For the word of God within us. Tall, Norm, and Short went to watch a baseball game together. When they arrived, they found that they'd been seated behind a fence and that only Tall could see over it to watch the game. They looked at each other, bewildered about what to do. Now, in the distance, Tall noticed a pile, a fairly large pile, of sturdy wooden crates that would be perfect for standing on. He pointed them out to Norm and Short, and the three of them brought that pile, took a number of trips, but they brought the whole pile back to where they'd been seated behind the fence. Norm and Short went to set up a couple of crates for themselves to stand on when Tall interjected. Just what exactly do you think you two are doing? Those are my crates. Huh? That doesn't make any sense at all, Short replied. We brought them back together, and you can see that Norm and I need them more than you do. Besides that, there's more than enough for all of us. I see where you're coming from, Tall said, but I was the one who found the crates, and I was the one who organized the effort to bring them back here. And without me, I think we can all agree on this, that there would be no crates to argue over. So any reasonable person would agree that they belong to me. In short, nodded, walked away to look for something else on which to stand. Perhaps there would be more crates or, or something else useful nearby. Norm, though, Norm felt incredulous over all this. Now wait just a minute, she fumed. Those crates, when we got here, were lying over there unattended. So how then can you say that they belong to you now? You're being incredibly selfish. Not to mention the fact that neither of us can see over this fence without at least a few of those crates to work with, and you don't seem to care. But while Norm was making her case, Tall had pushed all the crates over to his seat and piled them neatly. There, see? He said with a smile. It's all settled now. No need to argue anymore. You know, we should really keep the peace between us at all costs, shouldn't we? Right then, Short returned from their walkabout. Couldn't find no more crates, they said. Guess we'll have to stare at the fence all game long, Norm. Okay, we'll see about this, Norm said with a scowl. She flagged down a pair of security guards, waved them over. We need a little help here, she said to them. The three of us found these crates, and as you can see, us two won't be able to see over the fence without at least a couple of them to stand on. And Tall here has decided that they all belong to him, and he won't share. Not even a few so that we can see the game. Will you kindly tell him that he has to share? The nods, or the guards nodded to each other, and one of them spoke up and said, We can't help you sort through all that. Mr. Tall here has these crates clearly in his possession. Anyone can see that. And you want us to tell him to give them to you and Shorty over there? No can do, miss. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. And as far as the law is concerned, the crates belong to Mr. Tall. You'll have to work it out among yourselves. The guards tipped their hats and walked away. And Tall grinned smugly at Norm and at Short. Short blurted out, you're not a good person, Tall. You're mean and selfish and greedy. Tall looked incredibly hurt by these words. 
His voice wavered as he spoke. I didn't ask to be tall, he said. I didn't ask for a fence to be here, and I didn't ask for you to be short. None of this is of my making. None of it is my fault. It's just the way it is. Just then, a food vendor happened by. Hot dogs? Get your hot dogs here, one crate each, or three for two. Tall motioned to him. Yeah, yeah, I'll take three. He handed over two crates to the vendor and took the three hot dogs. At this point, his demeanor shifted back to that condescending air of deterministic superiority. He continued speaking. Now, short, Norm, you can hear the game. You can see the scoreboard up there, and I've parted with my hard-earned crates to get hot dogs for us. Can't you be content with that? After all, aren't we here together? Aren't we friends? He handed both of them a hot dog, which they begrudgingly accepted without a word of reply. A thank you would be nice, Tall sneered. Norm and Short plopped into their seats behind the fence, not saying a word, not even looking in Tall's direction. Tall stacked and arranged his crates and then climbed up a staircase of them onto a tower of them that loomed well above the fence. So ungrateful, he muttered as he climbed. I'm stuck watching the game with a couple of ingrates. The three of them now turned their attention toward the baseball game. Occasionally, Tall would cheer or boo at something that was going on. He'd make comments throughout the game to Norm and to Short, things like, wow, what a play. I wish you two could have seen it. And the view is so great from up here. And they just didn't respond. And their lack of response and their lack of engagement with this irritated Tall. He began to yell at Norm and at Short, Instead of sitting there pouting, why don't the two of you find your own crates? I'm starting to think, you guys, that you're just lazy people who aren't willing to work as hard as I've worked. Norman Short glared at him, but by then he resumed watching the game. During the seventh inning stretch, the PA announcer's voice boomed over the loudspeakers. We are pleased to announce that the stadium is now under new management. As per the new policy to ensure a positive experience at the ballpark, everyone in attendance is entitled to a minimum of one crate. If you have multiple crates, see that those near you are provided with one. Thank you for your cooperation. This is outrageous, Tall bellowed from above. I have to give away my crates to those lazy ingrates? What's this stadium coming to? Soon enough, Security guards came from around the corner, moved a crate each from Tall's edifice over to Norm and to Short. Tall didn't get up, didn't look down even. Short got their crate, stood on it, couldn't quite see over the fence. Norm stood on hers and could see well on her tiptoes. Norm said to Short, I'll let you use mine so you can see too. We'll take turns. And Short smiled wide. Thank you. Thank you so much, they said. Norm stood on her box on her tiptoes, peered over the fence. She looked around at all the, the seating areas around the stadium, and she saw something she probably should have expected but didn't. She, around the seating areas of the stadium, saw scattered throughout towers of crates with tall folks perched upon them. And as she watched for a moment, a few of them toppled and fell with a crash, but then moments later were built up taller than before. We've got to do better than this, she thought. The game moved into the bottom of the ninth inning, but before the final out was called, it stopped abruptly to the surprise of everyone. A man walked out onto the field to the pitcher's mound, carrying one of those old-style 
chrome stadium microphones. And he spoke into the mic. Grounds crew, go ahead and tear it down. Now is the time. An army of grounds crew people emerged and dispersed to form a perimeter around the field at the fences. As if with one motion, they pulled tools out of their belts and began to dismantle the fencing. And it wasn't very long at all before every bit of fence around the entire field lay strewn on the ground. Norman Short now could begin to see everything, and they could not believe what they were seeing. As the fences came down, they saw throngs of people, a great crowd, and still those now useless and irrelevant towers of crates interspersed throughout. The crowd let out a deafening cheer that lasted several minutes. When the cheer died down, the man on the mound spoke again. We're going to start a new game that everyone can see. Short, norm, or tall, you're invited to stay and watch if you desire. Vendors will be coming around with hot dogs, peanuts, and beer for everyone. After all, this is a baseball game. The crowd cheered raucously yet again. The man motioned for quiet. The crowd fell silent. But if you're sitting right now on a tower of crates, you might as well stay up there. Our vendors will not be giving you anything. Enjoy your view. Amen. For our homily hymn, we have number 180, Blessed Are the Poor in Spirit.
come now to the prayers of the people. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Prayers for Dick, who is having surgery. Is that correct? Prayers for a successful surgery and a painless and quick recovery. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for all of us who are celebrating Valentine's Day tomorrow. May we know that we are loved by our loved ones and by our God. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for Bill. Lord, in your mercy. We offer prayers again for the ongoing and unfolding situation in Russia and Ukraine, for the stress that it's caused a lot of people around the world, especially those in that region. We pray that peace would occur, that cooler heads would prevail. We pray for your will to be done, God, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for Sherry's parents, who we've been praying for right along as they deal with illness and the stress that all that causes. We also pray for Sherry as she attends them. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for Ann P., who is, looks like, grieving on the anniversary of a death that was very close to her. Prayers for comfort and grace to be with her. Lord, in your mercy. (coughs) Prayers for Lori, who is dealing with illness. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for Jordan. Prayers for health, stability, and wholeness, divine love. Grace. Lord, in your mercy. And then finally, prayers of joy for Bruce and David who are getting married. We offer prayers of joy and thanksgiving for their union. Lord, in your mercy. Here are prayers of joy. That was all the requests I was handed. So this time, let us pray together with the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn as we're accustomed to now on these Sundays that are not the first of the month, is number 77, Lord Dismiss Us With Your Blessing, verses 1 and 3. Please remain standing in body or spirit now for our benediction. Blessed are you who are poor, meek, mourning, and hungry. May God's Spirit teach us the blessed life of the ages. May 
Now our service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.